Giuliani also honored those who died in the line of duty on September 11th. He attended a prayer service this morning at the ruins of the World Trade Center. It was held at a site where more than 300 Merck firefighters died. Rabbi. Nearly 5,000 people are still missing. Leader Muhammad Atta, his flatmates Marwan al Shehi and Walid al Shehri. The BBC has learned all three received cash from a bin Laden financier in the Middle East. There's already firm evidence linking bin Laden to past attacks in which hundreds died on American embassies in Africa and on the USS Cole. This is plane touched down. This was the scene a few miles away. Thousands of Pakistanis venting their anger against the West. The fear remains that a radical minority will turn violent if America strikes against Afghanistan. Here too, Osama bin Laden is a pinup. And here he is in the flesh. These are the latest pictures of the world's most wanted man taken at his bases inside Afghanistan. You can hear machine gun fire in the distance. The Taliban today offered to put him on trial and off. In the choking dust of Takar province, a display of military might by the forces of the Northern Alliance. Their Soviet-built tanks may be old, but they're perfect for this harsh terrain. Inspecting the troops, their new commander, General Mohammed Fahim, who has yet to prove himself. This show was as much for the benefit of the West as a morale boost for his men. They're still wondering why America hasn't yet attacked their common enemy, the Taliban. Each hank here bears the image of Ahmed Shah Massoud, the charismatic leader of the Northern Alliance, assassinated just days before the attacks on America. Today, their new commander vowed to carry on his fight against Taliban and against terrorists, regardless of when America attacks. Dr. Ashraf Aini is one of many here, watching and waiting impatiently for the Taliban's defeat. He fled Kabul after treating civilians tortured by the Taliban. I have seen some cases uh, bitten by cable wire, not required, uh, required uh, solid cable. And uh, I have seen even one died uh, case uh, due to this uh, bit by cable. 65-year-old Ali Kool knows from bitter experience what Taliban punishment feels like. His crime was to cross the front line secretly to sell his goods in Northern Alliance territory. All he wanted to do was feed his family. Instead, he was caught and imprisoned. He shows us how the Taliban bound him hand and foot. For three days he was beaten and then taken to a prison for 20 nights. They took his money and his livestock, leaving Ali Kool with nothing. This week he was released and fled north, a refugee in his own country, praying for the Taliban's defeat, though he no longer has to live in fear. The scar that is a constant reminder to everyone who lives in New York. The attacks on the World Trade Center last month sent reverberations around the world, and at the UN headquarters on the other side of Manhattan Island, they delivered a jolt to all 189 UN member states. Today, delegates from all of these nations sat down to work out an international strategy to deal with terrorism. Each has its own experiences and views, but in a rousing opening address, the mayor of New York, Rudolph Giuliani, urged all of them to set their differences aside and work together to combat terrorism. The United Nations must hold accountable any country that supports or condones terrorism. Otherwise, you will fail in your primary mission as peacekeeper. It must ostracize any nation that supports terrorism. As the public face of this tragedy, and the mayor of the city where the UN headquarters are based, he was given a warm reception. Strong leadership is needed here, and after Mayor Giuliani, the UN Secretary General Kofi Annan stepped up to show the way. The task now is built on that wave of human solidarity to ensure that momentum is not lost, to develop a broad, comprehensive and above all sustained strategy to combat terrorism and eradicate it from our world. His Thank message was that the United yeah. Nations should be at the very center of any global coalition to fight terrorism. It's a struggle, he said, in which there was no alternative to international cooperation.
The strikes now are underway. We are told that once again tonight, it is nighttime, of course, there in Afghanistan. There are military targets being aimed at right now. Of course, it's very difficult to see anything very clearly with the with the night scope lenses. But um, as you. the president said yesterday, and as other military experts are saying, these attacks are expected to continue for some time. There's no definite um, word on when they will stop, but w they will continue for some time as the United States, along with support from the British, tries to hit some of the uh, Osama bin Laden's organization's airfields, some of the planes that they do have, that, that they are known to have, some of the tanks also that they are known to have. We expect also that those humanitarian airdrops that Andrew Colton reported about as taking place yesterday yesterday or last night um, Afghan time um, in the areas after the airdrops or at least in the northern part of Afghanistan we believe that those uh, humanitarian airdrops probably will continue also in order to try to reach some of the people of Afghanistan and to reassure them that they are not the target of these American and British air attacks but instead Osama bin Laden's forces as well as the Taliban government now President Bush has received overwhelming support for this latest military action going on in Afghanistan according to a new Washington Post ABC News poll 94% of Americans do support those airstrikes, even though many believe that this may prompt additional terrorist attacks that are targeted at the United States. 80% of those surveyed say that they would support sending ground troops into Afghanistan to either kill or capture terrorist leader Osama bin Laden. Towards eliminating the air defense sites that are located around the country. I also believe we've made an impact on the military airfields uh, that were targeted. We cannot yet state with certainty that we destroyed the dozens of military command and control and leadership targets we selected. Today we'll be continuing to collect damage assessments and we'll be uh, striking additional targets as appropriate, as well as being prepared to address emerging targets as they appear. We will continue our humanitarian airdrops today, providing much needed relief to the Afghan people. So to summarize, uh, every target was a military target. The reports indicating that there were attacks on uh, Kabul are incorrect. The attacks were on the military targets surrounding the city and most of what you saw on television undoubtedly was triple A coming up from the ground not something going down from the air. U.S. and British forces hit some two dozen of the targets. All U.S. Terry personnel and aircraft that took part in the yesterday's strike are safe and accounted for notwithstanding the uh, statements by right. who lived in America will never enjoy Peace. Coming up, the threatening statement on videotape from bin Laden. Find out if the White House is dead. I've touched it by a wound which has destroyed its greatest uh, uh, buildings, and thank God for that. Official spokesman Ari Fleischer says bin Laden and the Taliban regime have filled with fear from north to south, from east to west. Makaitis also adds that bin Laden lays out his justification for the and what America is tasting now is something very little of what we have tasted for tens of years. But in Pakistan today, supporters of the Taliban regime in Afghanistan did launch violent protests against the U.S. airstrike. <laughs> Police fired tear gas as well as live ammunition as thousands of protesters burned buildings there. They are demanding a holy war against the United States. The war violence broke out in the town of Quetta, that is, and some other cities along the Afghanistan border. One person has been killed, at least 26 others have been injured. In addition, five movie theaters, a police station, a UNICEF office, and a bank among the buildings burned in that community.